What's up, everyone? It's Turner Fan 77, aka Rich, and this is this week's movie news at five. I'm going solo today because David is on assignment. What that really means is David's giving his wife the lowdown, if you know what I mean. He needed to recharge his batteries, so he took the week off, and I'm here to deliver you guys the news for this week. I got a lot of news here, so we're just going to jump right into this. And first up, we're going to do the buyer bail. That's actually all we're going to do this week is buyer bail. Because David does all the other stuff, and I'm the one that gathers the news. So first up, we are going to jump right into um, the fall sequel. Did you guys like the movie The Fall? Because I did. And it is I'm trying to find the image here. Here we go. This movie is a lot of fun. I don't like heights, so this played to me really well. And we are getting a sequel to this directed by the Jigsaw guys, the Spring, Spring Brothers, I think that's how you say it. Um, there's no, really no plot details. Do we really need plot details? Because we you know there's a, they're going to be high in the air or something. But it is set for... Oh, man, wait, I don't think they have a release date, but um, they greenlight the sequel and a part three. So they're kind of getting, jumping ahead of themselves, which is okay, you know, if they're confident in the franchise. Um, did you guys like the fall movie? Are you guys looking forward to seeing this? As for the buy or bail, I'm going to buy because I had a lot of fun with the first one. So I'm looking forward to the second one. Next up, we have, excuse me here, I'm still trying to work all these things. David usually does all this. You guys like Adam Sandler, right? Who doesn't? Well, I really don't. I guess I shouldn't say that. But Adam Sandler, Adam Sandler's, let me start over, guys. Adam Sandler's Happy Gilmore 2 was confirmed to be greenlit at Netflix. And I am not a fan of Adam Sandler. I liked Happy Gilmore, the first one, but it's been at 15, probably 15, 20 years since I've seen it. I don't even know if it still holds up. But it seems like Adam Sandler's found success with Netflix because it seems like all his movies do well on there. Um, but for me, oh, let me see what there's any details on here. No, really, that's it. <laughs> that's the only thing they got is that it's been greenlit. I don't know if there's been a script or anything written yet. But as for the buyer bail, I'm definitely going to bail on this for now. But I'm sure when By the Numbers, when this is out, it'll be on By the Numbers because we watch all the movies for By the Numbers. So for now, I am bailing on Adam Sandler's Happy Gilmore 2. And we guys, do you guys, I said we guys, do you guys, we all like the John Wick franchise, right? Um, who doesn't? But John Wick 4 had Donnie Yen in it. And it was announced that he's getting a spinoff set for 2025. Um, let's see here. Donnie Yen. Uh, what are you, how are you guys feeling about a, another spinoff? of John Wick because we got the ballerina which I think is supposed to come out later this year I'm not for sure um, this will just be following the, his assassin character I think his name's Kane and there was no other it says here there's no other plot details um, it will continue his story arc following the events of John Wick 4 now my problem with this is that I feel like they're diluting the John Wick universe, okay? I didn't watch the Continental, which I think is on Peacock. I'm pretty sure it's on Peacock. I hadn't watched that, okay? Um, I really had no desire to, um, but now we still have the Ballerina, which is basically going to be John Wick 3.5, because I know it takes place between 3 and 4, um, and they word has it that John Wick, is Keanu Reeves is in this heavily, um, and hopefully it's good, but what if it's not? What, how would you guys feel of a shitty John Wick spinoff? 
do you think it's going to hurt the franchise or do you think the John Wick universe could survive a couple shitty movies? For right now, I'm optimistically buying this because I like Donnie Yen's character in this and I like Donnie Yen as an actor. So for now, I'm buying. Okay, next up is Catherine Bigelow is set to direct a new film at Netflix. But... Guys, when was the last time Catherine Bigelow has had a great movie? She hasn't had a lot of success. She had that movie, what is it called? Um, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. Yeah, that was a good movie. But who really saw that? I mean, not a lot of people saw that movie. Um, she had. There's not a lot of details on this movie at Netflix, but I think she needs a hit she hasn't had one in a long time but for now i am gonna bail on this news because there's not a lot of details and she hasn't had success lately so for me i'm bailing on Catherine bigelow no offense to her but yeah it's a bail for me <sighs> next up okay now this movie i'm excited because this next one is this one. Oh shit sorry banners supergirl i am excited what james gunn is going to be doing in the new dc universe um, i like the casting here this girl looks the part um i'm not familiar with her i think she's from house of dragons game of thrones house of dragons and i'm not a, okay let me put a pin in that the comic they're basing this off of i was not a fan of tom king wrote it it's not my version of Supergirl I like. So I'm really hoping that they're just using the name Supergirl Women of, Tom Woman of Tomorrow and not the actual storyline because the storyline was kind of shitty if you ask me. But besides that, guys, we finally got a release date of June 26th of 2026. You know, we're a couple years out. Yeah, almost two years out. Um, I hope this is good. Um, because I'm excited for it because like I said, she looks the part and I want to see a superwoman on screen. So what do we have next, guys? I'm trying to get through this, not to make this video long. Okay, next up, we have some big news from Universal. Um we got Universal sets dates for five nights at Freddy's two. The Black Phone 2 and Megan 2. And I'm not sure. Let me look at these dates here. <sighs> okay. Now, I wasn't a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's. That movie wasn't made for me. Um, but I really dug The Black Phone 2. And I really enjoyed Megan. Or I should say, I enjoyed The Black Phone. And I, because I hadn't seen The Black Phone 2 because it hasn't been made. But I enjoyed. The Black Phone and Megan. And let's see here. Five Nights at Freddy's has a release date of December 5th, 2025, which I think that's kind of, I think they should have put it the Halloween season, but who am I? I don't run a movie studio. And then you got The Black Phone 2 will shift from June 7th, 2025 to October 17th. Of 2025 they're just pushing it back a couple months and megan 2.0 is shifting from may 16th 2025 into the june slot of black panther or black phones june 27th so there's really not a whole lot of shuffling just a couple months or a couple or a month and one film's uh megan's moving up a month so that's not bad um, but yeah, I'm excited for two of the th out of the three. Um, I won't see Five Nights at Freddy's 2 unless David makes me go see it, and he probably will. So up next is some more movie. We've got a lot of movie release dates because it's about, you know, with the writer's strike and pandemic and all that crap. It was a slow stretch of no news, but... Now they're signing contracts, they're getting movies out there. We're gonna start getting some more release dates. And Sony is next up with 
a new Insidious movie. I did not like the last Insidious movie. I was not a fan of this franchise, but Blumhouse is announcing Sony and Blumhouse announced the new film for August 29th of 2025. I thought they said all they needed to say with the last one, but who am I? Um, I know that people do like this. I think David likes this franchise. I'm just not a fan. So for now, I'm bailing on this because I don't want to see it, but I'll end up seeing it for by the numbers. Um, and I forgot to do the um, buy or bail on the Universal announcement. I'm buying on Black Phone 2 and I'm buying on Megan 2, but I'm bailing on Five Nights at Freddy's. And next up with the movie news releases is Lionsgate, man. Lionsgate um, announced a lot of movies. Let me see, here we go. Lionsgate adds two movies to its release calendar. Mark Wahlberg and Mel Gibson's Flight Risk. Um, there's really not a whole lot about that one. It's just, just the title of the stars. And a movie that I had a lot of fun watching, which I thought was really good, and that's Gerard Butler's Dead of Thieves, Pantera. I didn't know this was getting a sequel until I found this in the news. And that's coming out January 10th. And Flight Risk is coming out this year, of October 18th of 2024. I'm a fan of Mark Wahlberg in serious roles. And I'm a fan of Mel Gibson. Because when they do, forget what Mel Gibson did behind the camera or off in the streets or whatever you hire everyone, it's personal life. He's still a fantastic director, a fantastic actor. So I'm buying on Flight Risk with Mark Wahlberg and Mel Gibson, and I'm definitely buying on Gerard Butler's Den of Thieves 2, Pantera. So two good movies announced there. Oops. And then we have, man, this one. This one has me excited because I love the X-Men comics. I enjoyed the X-Men films for the most part. But we're finally getting the X-Men in the proper Marvel Universe, Marvel Studios, MCU, however the hell you want to say it. We finally got a screenwriter in Michael Leslie. Um, he wrote um, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of the Somberg, which I really enjoyed. I hadn't, didn't think I was going to like this movie at all. And I really enjoyed that. Um, I think he wrote Macbeth too. So I am definitely buying on this because I can't wait to see, even though I'm burnt out on the X-Men or the Marvel movies in general, this has me excited because I'm a big fan of the X-Men. So there's that. And we got one more piece of news for today's episode of Movie News at Five. <sighs> well, I love James Cameron's, or James Cameron, um, I don't know why I said James Cameron. Um, the guy who did the Star Trek movies, the remakes, what's his name? J.J. Abrams. In my mind, I'm blank there. I'm a big fan of his movies, his Star Trek movies. This news, though, kind of threw me. Um, Simon Kinberg, I think that's how you say it. He is going to produce, I hope it's just produce, the new Star Trek movie um, because he sucked as a director. He did X-Men, Dark Phoenix, whatever it was called. Um, but he has a great track record as a producer. He produced a lot of great stuff. Um, he produced The Martian, which was a fantastic movie with Matt Damon. He produced the last two Deadpool movies. The first two Deadpool movies, I should say. But this, I don't know, man. I really soured on him on the Dark Phoenix movie. And I don't know. I'm going to, for right now, I'm going to bail on this. Because I just, he, his name leaves a sour taste in my mouth. And I don't want that with my Star Trek movies. So that's really it, guys. Um Next week, it'll be better with David here. So I'm just trying to get through this so we can get the movie news out. Um, I didn't gather any deaths this week. And I don't want to talk about death. We want to stay positive here as much as positivity as we can. 
Um, but yeah, I want to give a big shout out to all our viewers. Thank you for tuning in every week um, for By the Numbers. And next week's episode, we're going late. We're going to go at 1030 Central, my time, or maybe 1030, 11 Central, depending on when I get back, because my son has some things to do. Um, and I did get him in bed. It's just the whole thing. But we'll be looking at 10 movies. 10 movies. It's going to be a supersized episode. It's going to be late night. But I hope you guys still join us because we didn't go live last week or this week, I should say, because David's out of town. And I'm looking forward to chatting with my brother um, because that's what he is. I consider him family. We may not be blood related, but he's my brother. So, guys, thank you for watching. Remember, be kind to one another and have a great night. Hold on here. I'm just almost out of here. I'm almost out of here. There we go.